So let's start with the actions of the toxin. This gives you a lot of uh, questions, this one slide itself. So every exotoxin here is going to have two subunits. Remember, B for B, say binding, A say action. Even if your brain says that, are, are, A to attachment hai, B se kuch nahi banega. So you shut your brain up and you say that, no, no brain, it is B for binding, A for action. Coming to inhibiting protein synthesis, what is the main toxin? that inhibits elongation factor 2. This is Corinebacterium diphtheria, which is the diphtheria toxin. And I will try and tell you whatever it is in the minimum time uh, that I can. All right. So now when we talk about diphtheria toxin, remember one thing, the mechanism that happens is by ADP ribozylation. It inhibits elongation factor 2 by ADP ribozylation and that is a common mechanism to almost everything. So that is one other repeat question. Two tests with diphtheria toxin, we have a gel precipitation test so that is lx gel precipitation test lx se hi rhyme karta hai shik so the shik test is the skin test skin shik lx everything goes together right so that's all about diphtheria toxin you know the chinese letter arrangement what is the stain for corinebacterium diphtheria we have albert stain where the volutin granules which have diphtheria toxin are going to be stained differently hence the name is metachromatic granules all right so this is about diphtheria and the other bacteria which has the same mechanism is pseudomonas exotoxin a so that is going to be the other toxin with the same mechanism. So this is protein synthesis by elongation factor 2. Protein synthesis by 60S. So, so se hi shigella toxin. Shigella shiga-like toxin. Shiga-like toxin also called viroline toxin produced by E. Heck, enterohemorrhagic E. coli. What is the special species of E. Heck which is important? That is O157 H7. So do you see a pattern here with sir? That's all you want to remember. Don't remember full name. Remember 77 sir S. Sir se hi yaad rakho. There is a special method to identify this. This has a special property that this does not ferment what? Very good. This does not ferment sorbitol. So for that reason, I grow this one, sorbitol meconki agar. And this is the one which does not ferment and that is how I can recognize it. Why this is special? Because this is the most common cause of hemolytic uremic syndrome. HUS sab kuch naam mein hai. Hemolytic anemia, uremia and shigella. So shigella matlab dysentery. So that is the triad. Don't remember triad and like that. Okay, naam mein answer hai. No need to memorize. So this is... 60S. Now going on to CAMP. CAMP is in the name itself. Just write CAMP and we know as BTR students that M is L, right? They are both always going together. We will see various places where they do. So C is C is cot. What is cot? Cot is zot. What is cot and zot? So cholera toxin, which is zonula occludens toxin. So repeat question, this acts on zonula occludens. Which GM? This is mega BTR1. So this is GM1 gangliocyte. Or better still, which is the first subject that we are doing? The first subject we are doing is micro. So this is GM1. The second subject which I'm going to be teaching you is going to be GM2, which is going to be biochemistry. So in biochemistry, second subject of the day, I'll teach you TASAC. So that's how you remember. Mega BTR, my first subject was GM1. In offline, I say first day and second day, which doesn't apply here. So this is GM1 and GM2. Two. Yeah, so this is how you are going to remember. A for anthrax. Anthrax, put, uh, anthrax. L for LT toxin of ETEC, enterotoxicogenic E. coli. And then P is pertussis toxin. Pertussis, you know, is whooping cough. Whooping cough will have an inspiratory whoop. And in infants, this can be associated with apnea also, right? So that's what you want to remember. CGMP, now LT is sorted. So ST of ETEC is CGMP. And that's all we want to remember. Neurotransmitter release is by a group of proteins called snare proteins, which inhibit neurotransmitter release. Two things which can be inhibited. If I inhibit acetylcholine, 
कॉन्ट्रेक्शन को इनिबिट कर दिया तो कैसा पैरालिसिस मिलेगा फ्लैसिड पैरालिसिस एंड दिस इज बाय बोटॉक्स बोटुलिनम टॉक्सिन दैट्स व्हाई बोटुलिनम टॉक्सिन रिलैक्सेस एजिंग रिंकल्स चले जाएंगे इफ यू हैव अकलेशिया रिलैक्सेशन हो जाएगा राइट सो दैट इज बोटुलिनम टॉक्सिन ऑन द अदर हैंड इफ आई इनहिबिट GABA and glycine, which are my inhibitory neurotransmitter, inhibit को inhibit कर दिया तो spastic contraction मिलेगा opisthotonus, pleurosthotonus, all of those posturing will be there. So if this is pre-synaptic inhibition, pre-e is te, this is tetanus, and if it is post-synaptic inhibition, which toxin mimics tetanus? That is strychnine, right? So this is about contraction spastic paralysis super antigen this was question last time in fact three questions from last inict here what is zot zonula occludens or oh, did i mention that did i say what is cholera and zo is zonula occludens i think i forgot so cholera is zonula occludens is one repeat elongation factor 2 is the second repeat of diphtheria and super antigen is the third repeat so how super antigen binds here is on the side right so this is going to bind to the side normally antigen antibody ko ye site chahiye hota hai here this site is not needed this specificity is not needed it's going to bind to the side and create a cytokine storm so remember super antigen two things strep and staph strep pyogenes exotoxin a and we have staph which produce super antigen leading to a toxic shock syndrome and yahan pe aapko buzzword diya hoga of either a retained tampon or a retained nasal gospis so some sort of a foreign body will be mentioned for you to make a diagnosis switching slightly so these are all the toxins gets you one question minimum in every exam mm -hmm.